of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. Enforcement of the traffic laws is one of the major functions of the highway patrol. Despite constant vigilance, recklessness and speed bring their daily toll of life and property. On May 1st, two men were speeding to a resort area. They were dressed like fishermen, they looked like fishermen, but they were different from most fishermen. Told you to take it easy on those curves. Gil's probably gone out of his mind right now because we're behind schedule. You might even think that we forgot the bait. Uh, some bait? Yeah, and plenty of it. Plenty. If I ever get you ten, you can't guess what I'd like to be doing. I'll give you a hint. It's the opening day. Sure, you and a million other fishing fanatics. Some of them won't make it. You check the hospitals and morgues, you'll see. Yeah, I know what you mean. Breaking our necks to get to their favorite spots. Here's a bulletin on that Clayton Industries robbery this morning. Oh, an eyewitness just located. Saw two men speeding away from the plant at 5 a.m. in a green and white convertible. Make and license unknown. Suspects were headed north on Highway 110. That's all? And you wanted to go fishing. Oh, wait a minute. A couple of guys knock over the biggest industrial plant in the area. There's got to be a thousand green and white convertibles around here, so what have we got now? Green and white convertible. Making license unknown in two men. You don't call that good fishing? Well, they could be out of Lake County by now. Yeah, it's too late for a roadblock. Put out an APB. Tell them to be on the lookout for a green and white convertible. Two men, making license unknown. Tell them to use caution. They might be on. Right. side of the road. Hey, in England, that's good driving. It's reckless driving here beside. Ah, oh, don't be a sore head. We're on a vacation. Let's live it up. Yeah, let's do just that. <laughs> What's money now? <laughs> I was just thinking. My brother-in-law's probably yelling his lugs out of my sister right now because I took the car. <laughs> it's his baby. Hey, look out! <laughs> $50,000. Oh, that's not a bad haul. Huh? We got nothing. 11 green and white convertibles are all clean. Hey, yeah, sure, I'll keep you posted. What do you got? An accident report out on County Road 4 near the Pinecrest Resort area. What are you giving it to me for? Well, I thought you ought to know. There were two men. They were driving a green and white convertible. Let's take a look. you lost back in Wisconsin. What a whopper. You ever think about him? Yeah. I had three years to think about him. Any sign of him yet? Ah, uh, nothing. Must have had car trouble. You checked the car? Sure. Ran like a clock. We a lot of things. Detour, tire. Yeah, those wet-aid punks probably dropped off someplace just for a sandwich. Sounds like an ambulance. Our cops? Uh, must be an accident. Whatever it is, I don't like it. You better get out and take a look. Sure, Gil. Rubberneck all you want. You keep your mouth shut.
Right, Darcy, what goes? Two fatalities, fishermen. Speedometer stopped at 60. Guess they thought the trout wouldn't wait. When'd you get here? Well, it couldn't have been more than a few minutes after it happened. I was on 110 at Rich Corners. Anybody here when you arrived? Just an old man and his wife, that's all. They said they lived down a canyon, heard the crash and came right off. I got the statements. Is all the stuff they had with them? That's it. The trunk flew open when it hit. It's empty. You sure? Well, I checked everything when I made out the impound sheet. Everything's listed. Looks like good equipment. It's real good. Too good. It's brand new. Never been used. Just doesn't gel. Fisherman's usually got a favorite, a rod or a reel. He's never found without it. Maybe it was the first time they made a trip. Oh, it's their last. They'd be alive right now if they had safety belts. Looks like a good car for a fishing trip. How is it? Fine. Greatest car I've ever used. What do I do with these heaps, anyhow? They go to the impound garage in the edge of town in Conover until we release them. <laughs> Who'd want them? Here's their identification and the owner's registration slip. Hank Lloyd and George Stason. Which one's the owner? Neither. It's registered to a man named Stuart Mitchell. On the radio. Have a unit go out to Stuart. See what they can find about the two fatals. Trouble, Gil. Spill it. They cracked up. Both of them are dead. Ah, uh, that's what I get for picking a couple of greenhorns. You wanted men without a record. You know what you were doing. Sure, I know what I was doing. I make the plans, case the job. I even tell them how to crack it. I figure all the angles, all the odds. I even got a perfect spot to lay over until the heat's off. Then this has to happen. It's one of them things. How much did the cops know? Well, they were looking for a green or white car. They found one. So what? Did a smart thing by using Red and Hank. Cops will fingerprint them. What'll they find? Nothing. Even if they connect them to the job. Sure. We get a perfect alibi. That's why I insisted upon wishing those three fishermen luck this morning. Along about the time that Hank and Red were knocking over the plant. Of course, I didn't figure on accidents. How about the dough? Must still be in the car. We got a lucky break. It didn't catch fire. Yeah. What a break. I found out where they're taking it to. Impound garage over in Conover, the one at the edge of town. Where? You know, the one on the bottom of the hill, the Pinecrest Road sides. Yeah. Why didn't I think of that before? We can get to that wreck tonight. We know where the dough is and the cops don't. And with a little luck, we can reach it before they do. Well, we might as well go fishing. Tonight, we get spare parts for a car. Spare parts? Oh, sure. Spare parts. <laughs> Wilson just phoned in the report on Stuart Mitchell, the car owner. Did they give you anything? No, not much. Hank Lloyd was Mitchell's brother-in-law. Took the car last night without his permission. Mitchell didn't know Strayson. We checked out both Lloyd and Strayson. No record on either one. So we're still looking for a green and white convertible with two men. Not much to go on, but we'll keep at it. Leave the jeep here. Say, old timer. Oh. oh, you give me a start. I didn't hear you come in. I'd like to buy one of your wrecks here uh, for the pots. Well, now, now, it's pretty late. I, I was just about closing. Well, uh, this won't take very long. Besides, you'll be doing me a big favor. Well, I suppose business is business. Uh, what do you want? How about this model right here? Oh, no, no, I can't sell you that one. No, why not? Well, that's impounded. You've just come in today. I got another one, same model, better shape. It's over there. You know, it's a funny thing. I like this model right here. 
Some guys will never get their brains until they get them knocked out. Is it still there? Yeah, but it's wedged in from the crash. We can't work here. Bring the jeep around. Right. that the wrecked car matched the description of the suspect car had warranted a close inspection by the patrol officers. The theft of the wreck was an unusual crime, drawing renewed interest on the part of the patrol. How is he? Oh, a little confused. More shock than anything else. Did he say anything to you? Not much. And I'll talk to him. Highway patrol. How'd you hurt? That was some crack he'd give me. Oh, I sure saw stars. How long ago did this happen? How long? Let's see. Uh, see, I was just about closing, around 6, 6.30. See, why'd he have to hit an old man for a wreck like that? Could be worth $50,000. We can find what we think is in it or on it. Now, look, I know this is very hard, but please try and remember. Do you know who did it? No, I, I see one of them, but I think there was two. Somebody else hit me. Not the guy I was talking to. What did he say to you? Wanted to buy a wreck for parts, he said. And he went right over to that green and white one, and... Unless when the skies fell down on me. Well, did you notice what they drove up in? They must have had something to tow it away with. No, no, no. I didn't see. Uh, oh, maybe they had a tow truck. Look, can you describe him? Describe him? Uh, oh, no, no. Not right now. Not with this head. No. Uh, maybe if I saw him again, I could... Well, we'll try and arrange that for you. Thanks very much. Take care of that head of yours. Give me a list of all the places in town that rent tow rigs and trucks. Find out how many went out yesterday, where they went, what they hauled, and who got them. Oh, and about the wreck. You got the description. Get an APB out, see if we can locate it. Come on, let's go to Mitchell's house. This looks pretty good. Besides, we've been towing this wreck too long now. Let's put it back in those bushes. Okay. beauty part of it is we only have to cut it up two ways. Well, the only thing left to do is to get as far away from this part of the country as possible. Are you kidding? We're going back to the cabin. 
Any sudden move in this area by anybody will bring in the cops. Besides, we got nothing but money and plenty of time to fish. Well, what about the wreck? Uh, we've covered it up with brush so they can't see it from the road. Come on, let's work in a hurry. Highway Patrol. Oh, it's about that terrible accident. Yes, I'm sorry, but we need some more information. My wife. It was an awful shock to her. Just awful. Uh, he was her only brother. You lend him your car? I should say not. And I was right. You can see that now. When did he take it? Must have taken it sometime during the night. Probably took my wife's keys. Well, I don't really blame him. I think his friend talked him into it. Was his friend a red-headed guy? Red-headed? No. He was a dark man, older than Hank. This dark man. Could you identify him if you saw him again? You bet your life I could. Thanks, Mr. Mitchell. mile radius of town to cover. That's a pretty big job. Yeah, but it's ours. Oh, and we're checking warehouses and garages in case they try to take it indoors. No, they're too smart for that. The car's too hot. They take a wreck like that indoors, somebody will ask questions. Well, let's hope we're not that smart. Dorsey's on Pinecrest Road, isn't he? Yeah. Have him check that little road right at the base of the hill near the edge of town. Right. Twenty-two seventeen headquarters. Twenty-two seventeen headquarters. Dorsey just called in. He's found a suspect car. It's on the Pinecrest Highway, about six miles out of town, just off the road. Looks like you were right. Let's hope I'm not cold. Come on.
Nice going, Dorothy. Thanks. I picked this up in a brush. I don't know whether it's any good. You may have the answer to the money. That box is just about big enough to hold it. Must have been fastened to the car someplace, probably underneath. Who's ever running this operation is a pretty smart guy, and he probably found what he wanted, $50,000. I think Lloyd and Strayson probably cracked up on the way to a rendezvous. That means whoever they're going to meet must be holed up in the Pinecrest area. Well, maybe. Maybe they ditched the wreck on the way to the hideout. Get the lab crew out here. Have them check the whole place. Make sure they get the fingerprints off that box. Let's go talk to some fishermen in this area. you're wonderful and you don't have to have money to enjoy it you didn't feel this way yesterday i didn't have money yesterday the jeep I saw at the accident yesterday. That could tow a wreck. Let's take a look at it. The dents in green paint weren't there yesterday. This could be the tow car. The lab can run a quick check on this paint against the paint on the wreck. Let's talk to those fellows over there. Let me do the talking. How are you? I'm Matthews, Highway Patrol. One of you gentlemen owned that Jeep? Yeah, me. That's right. I saw you driving that Jeep yesterday at the accident down the road. Yeah, I was there. I come to think of it, you said the Jeep was pretty handy for fishing. But then green paint weren't on it yesterday. Where'd it come from? I accidentally backed into a car yesterday. It wasn't a wreck before you backed into it, that is. No. Of course not. Did you get the name of the owner of the car you backed into? No. It was my fault, and we agreed the car wasn't hurt, so I drove away. Did you happen to be in Conover yesterday, Mr. Uh... Martin. Gil Martin. And I wasn't in Conover yesterday morning. I can prove it by Joe here and a couple of fellows I met fishing yesterday. Mr. Martin, do you know some fellows by the name of Lloyd or Red Stason or Stuart Mitchell? No. We're up here on a fishing trip. I don't know anybody in Conover. I didn't say they were from Conover. You better come along in with us. What for? You got nothing on us. I haven't got anything on either one of you, but I want your help. First, I'd like to have you meet a fellow by the name of Stuart Mitchell. He's the registered owner of the wreck. Two, the attendant that was slugged at the impound garage. Three, I'd like to check your prints against those on the cash box. And four, I'd like to check the green paint on the Jeep against that of the wreck. Now, if you're clean, you'll be back in a couple of hours. It's beautiful equipment you've got. New, too. Okay, Joe. Put the stuff away. And get rid of the bait. I'll help you. Get on the radio to headquarters. Tell them to get a warrant out here so I can search the cabin. Unless you guys want to tell us where the money is. You ought to hang around here to fish. Okay. Take them out. Not a bad day's catch for this early in the season. See the highway patrol in action again next week. Until then, remember, leave your blood at the Red Cross, not on the highway. This is Broderick Crawford saying, see you next week.